Hi everybody, welcome back to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, thanks for watching and let's get started. In today's video I'm just going to summarize the highlights from the recent Q&A session, hosted by our regular three musketeers from Microsoft and Asobo, Jorg, Sebastian and Marcel. We'll be looking at a date for the introduction of DLSS and FSR support was announced. Good news for those waiting for multi-monitor support. A new slide is to be introduced enhancing VR experience. First details on Local Legend number 4, another quirky aircraft, an update for Wassum on the Xbox, and last but not least further details on World Update 9, Italy and Malta. DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling is a way of rendering images quicker and potentially offers users of the sim improved frame rates including in VR. Sebastian advised that development's just about complete with DLSS. There's some artifacts, particularly in terms of rendering in water, but they're optimistic they'll overcome that, and it's slated for Sim Update 10 at this time. That's July for you and me. Also provisionally planned for release at the same time is FSR for AMD users. With further developments planned with potentially FSR 2.0 coming in Sim Update 11 or 12. Either way, a 2022 release for FSI is on the cards. After a number of substantially vague answers in previous Q&A sessions, we were able to get some more detail on multi-monitor support at last. This highly anticipated feature looks like it's going to make it for Sim Update 10. So once again, we're looking at a July timeframe. That timeframe, I think, is best case scenario but there is the potential for it to slip, so it could be Sim Update 11. That could possibly push the time frame out to September. I know for many Flight Sim users, this can't come soon enough. There have been complaints at previous Q&A sessions that VR just doesn't get any time and attention. It's a criticism that's not without some validity. But at last we did get some feedback. Marcel announced that a new world scale slider will be introduced for VR users. This will allow pilots to adjust the size of the cockpit to more accurately represent what's in the real world. Some of the cockpits are far too small and some too large. So for VR users this will be welcome news. Marcel went on to say that a number of new features were in the planning stage, but we didn't get any further details. What he did stress, however, was that VR is treated as a separate platform. The same way as PC and Xbox are treated as separate platforms. There are people on all teams responsible for VR now. And up to a third of the Q&A team have VR responsibilities. Just a note to Jorg, unless I'm very much mistaken, that's a G1. You want to get a HP Reverb G2, Jorg. During the session, Jorg commented on the Microsoft Cloud Gaming Platform and said there are now four times as many users using Microsoft Flight Simulator than was the case this time last year. There was some positive news for Xbox users. The introduction of WASM, or WebAssembly Coding, which facilitates the interaction between programs, should be available for Xbox users by Sim Update 10, so once again we're looking at July. What's the significance of that? Well, it will assist in bringing the more complex aircraft to the Xbox platform, such as the Twin Otter DC-6 and potentially PMDG-737. However, please note, I am speculating here. Sebastian reported that a lot of work was going on behind the scenes on DX-12. They still had further work to do, particularly in the area of memory optimization. And once again, they had planned to put in some changes by Sim Update 10. What we don't know is whether or not DX12 will offer any benefit in terms of performance for PC users. Right now, DX12 is not really an option, as the performance on DX11 is far superior. But that's certainly one to watch come July. World Update 9 Italy and Malta will be coming out on May 17 and they'll be releasing the fourth in their Local Legend series. And if you thought the Dornier Wall was an odd one, well, wait till you check this one out. It's the Italian Marchetti S55. It'll come in three variants, from the prototype up to the S55X. It's a twin prop in a push-me-pull-me combination, and was made famous in the 1930s for multiple crossings of the Atlantic Ocean. 
a service ceiling of 15,000 feet, although it'll take you an hour to get up there. And depending on the variant, speed will vary between 115 miles an hour to a maximum of 150. So you won't be winning any races in this one. There was no trailer for the World Update 9, Italy and Malta, but we did get a few more picks. But from the details provided, it's clear this is probably Microsoft's biggest update in terms of scenery that we've seen in Microsoft Flight Simulator to date. They also mentioned that the data is fairly up to date, it's 2021. And once again, in terms of points of interest and airports, they have Gaia and Orbix working on them. It'll include 13 photogrammetry cities, so maybe it's time to dust off that spare hard disk laying around. As we've come to expect, it will include bush trips, landing challenges and discovery flights. Turning now to some of the issues raised during the question and answer session, Seb confirmed that the planned atmospheric flows, turbulence, updrafts and winds were included in Sim Update 9. But the visualization effects for developers were not included and would be coming up in a future sim update. Microsoft will at last be allowing premium deluxe aircraft to be modded by third parties. And Marcel and Jorg both touched on the upcoming scenery gateway. The idea behind the gateway is to allow third party developed products which are freeware to be available to the community. Development work was ongoing and was currently being trialled by Orbix, but once established they would still be a vetting service to ensure compatibility and quality, something I find reassuring. Whilst recent improvements to the clouds were welcomed, there was concern about how dark or volcanic some of the clouds now looked. Seb responded by saying he was aware of this problem, but didn't have a solution right now. So this is a carried forward item. No short-term fix available. The team will ask, are they aware that very often propellers and gear were not displaying correctly in multiplayer? They didn't appear to be aware of that and took that one forward. Various other topics were discussed and I'll leave a link to the full Q&A session in the notes below the video. However, one final point worth mentioning is that the discussions and progress with Antonov is back on. The guys have advised they're back at work on the project. This is a recent development, so Jorg hoped to have more details at the next Q&A. What he did say, however, any profits generated from the sale of this product would be donated to the real-world rebuilding of the Antonov 225, which I think is a great gesture. Well, that's it. That's about all I could squeeze into eight minutes from the one-and-a-half-hour Q&A session. Hope you found it useful and interesting. Thank you very much for watching as always. Stay well. Don't forget to subscribe for more like this. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now.